Oh well. Okay, I got we have this little uh, EMF meter, and it's running about 52 right now, 121. It's bumping around a little bit, and um, my son is showing me that he's going to send a uh, couple photos from his phone, so it's going to bump up the signal from the phone while it's headed to the Wi-Fi. Okay. Let's say another one or no? So this is running around, you know, it's jumping around a little bit. All right, then jump up to like 800 or something as soon as he sends a photo. Which is the, the data transferring. So that's a little bit how that works right there. Okay, now we're down here by the modem. The router's up there. There's a reason why I have it up there so I can get better signal upstairs. But uh, I'm being told that, the, of course, the bigger the file you download or upload, the heavier um, the, the, the spike will be. And so you can see where it's at now. It's bounced around a little bit. It's, it seems to be relatively low at 0.1 and 0 0.0. And now he's going to open YouTube. He jumped up a little bit while he opened it. And so I'm learning too about this. So it's a lot of it depends upon, and that would have been coming from the modem instead of going to like previously, or the router, I mean. So uh, a lot of it has to do with just how heavily you're using the Wi Fi. Do you, want to do, do you want me to open a video? Yeah, sure. You can open up another one on his phone. See, right there, it was just that quick. Um, so how heavily are you using it? Oh, now it's gotten some, it's doing a little something. Was that something you were doing? It was just loading a little bit. Okay. So the signal varies as to how heavy you're using it. Okay, something else I want to try is I bought this reflective stuff. It's like, I think it's copper or zinc, I forget. It's some kind of metal that's supposed to shield you from... EMFs and so we're still down here in the basement and here is the thing running the EMF meter So let's just run in the let run for a little bit Let's bounce around between what? 0.1 down to 0.0 Let's kind of run around from 0.04 to 0.1 I'm going to bounce around now I put this here And it keeps it keeps the spikes down. It seems. So it shows you how a little piece of metallic cloth will shield you from the spikes. A little bit's going through, but that could be what, our neighbors, maybe. Literally anything that isn't the router. Right. So that could be from things outside the house. Um, so there's that. Okay. Now we are going to we have it on the magnetic setting instead of the EMF, and this is just kind of, not the strongest magnet, but you can see how magnets bump up quite a bit. And why people probably wear bracelets and magnets. Okay, thank you. And from what my under, son understands, this is an electri electrical field, which he says does not hurt you. Magnetic fields don't help hurt you. It's the EMFs. Uh, my my mother-in-law would always tell me, don't sleep with your head right next to an outlet. But she was more concerned about just the energy and keeping you awake at night. I think more than anything else, if you're sensitive to energy. So yeah, you'd want to be, you know, maybe three feet away from an uh, electrical outlet from your head if your bed is at next to a neck. But there's wiring in your house, too. We can check that real quick and see how strong that would be. Okay, now we're just going to go along the wall. Right there, it jumps up to 230. Again, probably harmless, but now you want to pull away from the wall where it's strong. Go where it's strong and then pull away from it. Okay. First, our houses are pretty much wrapped in wire. 
apparently harmless, but you know, you're just energizing yourself a little bit. So that's about a foot and a half away. We'll go a little further. Okay, what about the middle of the room? Is it picking up anything? Probably not, right? No. Yeah, if you toward the middle, of course, zero. So he, he just found a wire in the wall, of course, um, at that location. So put your bed in the middle of your bedroom. <laughs> you want to be away from, I'm not saying it's harmful, but just away from energy in general. Okay, now I'm outside. Actually, our router is just, and modem is just on the side of the basement wall here. Um, but it's not being used much, so it really depends upon how much you're drawing from it, as my son was saying. Otherwise, it's just kind of idle, not doing a whole lot. And uh, I just wanted to go check the smart meter real quick and uh, see uh, what it uh, is doing. I guess it just bounces a signal every so often. Oh, 0.5, it jumped at the 0.5 real quickly. That might have been it right there. I just hit a up. Oh. 1.6 1.2 it's going kind of crazy right here that's right where it's at um, hold on Kai 2.4 some say it only shoots a little signal on it once every minute and I'm hearing other stories that it is shooting a lot more often than that so but like my son was saying, sometimes uh, you're getting stuff from who knows where, you know. And we'll just stay here for a little bit. Four point seven, that was a bit high, I guess. Got it, cool. 2 .2. 0.8 This is the uh, RF setting that we're using for the Wi-Fi. It's going to bounce around a little bit. relatively quiet. I mean, there's a 0 0.9. Question is, how much is harmful to you? Uh, my son was telling if you go to cancer.gov, you can uh, find a tab for um, electromagnetic fields and what amount is dangerous. And it's several times higher than what the earth itself puts out. So, like medical equipment. Um, scans and the like would be uh, reaching that point. Um, if you want to go check that out. He was, he's not too concerned about this. A 5G tower is the next thing I want to hit sometime. Um, that'll probably be the next video. This video is getting kind of long. So I'm just going to get away from this a little further. There's about 5 foot. 0.7 there. And then again, you know, we got neighbors, so Point zero one. Oh, let's see, it bumped up to six just for a second. One point eight right there. And there's nothing on the other side. Oh, there, there could be a. No, there's really nothing on the other side of this garage except uh, electricity outlets, but that would be a different setting. So I'm just kind of slowly backing up. And uh, point zero five, point zero two. I'm relatively happy that the. 6 just bumped up but 
three. Two point something right there. That's kind of weird. Um, so I don't know if that really even said much of anything. Maybe it made, made some sense to you. Point nine there. Maybe this is saying something to you all. Um, point five, point six, point seven. I'm going to go in the basement just a little bit to see if there's any difference being underground. I'm trying to be kind of in a place in the basement that's away from everything. And yeah, generally speaking, it runs a lot quieter. It even saw zero, complete zero there for a second. Basement's not a bad place to be if you're away from the walls a bit. Wow, that's nice. Something else we're going to throw in here is my son's uh, drone transmitter. And so he's going to show you. That's quite a bit. Okay, now we're going to have the microwave on. Ooh, that's outside the microwave. 8, 11, 10. So it's just standing in front of a microwave. It's way more you'll get anywhere near. I'll pull the way how long, how far you have to be away to... Yeah, we're a bit of a distance here and it's still 5.5. That's quite a bit for being, again, how much does it take to hurt you would be the question, but we'd have to back off about seven, eight feet, I guess, before it really drops good. That's why I get rid of microwaves when they're over 20 years old. Ours is about 15 years old, so a newer one may not be as much, I'm not sure. Okay, I'm not professionally editing this, obviously. I'm just pushing the pause button. But uh, my son was saying even though with all that activity around the outside of the microwave, that's still like a very small amount. He's talking about amps coming at you. So you can kind of see here how strong the signals are, how strong they're not. The microwave was really strong compared to anything else you're going to pick up. And we started talking about radioactivity a little bit. Might get a Geiger counter at some, here at some point. They're a little pricey, but, um, you know, if an asteroid hits, it's probably not a good idea to go look at it. Definitely don't touch it, because that's been in space a long time, long time and it's had a lot of radiation absorbed into it. And he said it's the, uh, the, the gamma rays are, are like off x-ray machines. Those are pretty tough on you. Um, and uh, the alpha rays can be kind of, are, are relatively harmless because dead skin cells will stop it. But when you inhale it or eat it, that's when there's a problem. Like when Fukushima um, broke um, and it was spilling radiation and it got in the air, the cows were eating the grass and then the, the people were drinking the milk from the cows. So once you drink something with alpha radiation, um, then it gets to your live cells. And of course, iodine helps with that a little bit. Um, I don't understand the exact process, but apparently it, it uptakes some of that stuff. So keep your iodine up. Anyway, that's what we just learned, and uh, I hope it was helpful to you.